Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to take a second look and almost re review DC Legends. Now, the last time I talked about this game was about six months ago. The game released about seven and a half, almost eight months ago in November of last year. So I almost saw it after it came out, and since then, quite a lot has changed, but more importantly, a lot has changed for the game very recently. In the last couple of weeks, that's been hit with a major patch that's brought a lot of new content and new social aspects to the game. So I wanted to cover those and cover kind of the differences and compare and contrast between the game that I discussed six months ago and where it is today. Because you do expect games uh, to improve over time and with the fan base demanding certain things, I wanted to see just how far they've come. I do want to preface it by saying or kind of put the warning out there that I didn't play this game non-stop. I did take a pretty long break of about three or four months, but I have been playing it again recently. I picked it up about a month, maybe a month and a half ago. I really enjoy it. I play it sometimes when I'm waiting for uh, things to happen in Future Fight on my phone on the live streams and the bros know I'm not sleeping. So uh, let's jump right in guys. So f first of all, the big thing that's changed is the look of the game from the main screen. There's a lot more things to click and there's a lot more game modes to jump into. Additionally, you can see on the left hand side, there's both a team icon and more importantly an alliance mission icon that I'm covering with my camera. If you press that icon over there, you're gonna go to your alliance. Yes, they finally added alliances to this game and while it may seem like a small feat, it's actually very important to keep the social aspect of a game alive and since this game is very PvP focused, there is a very strong social uh, community behind it because they're discussing new PvP strategies, how to counter certain teams and certain builds, so it's very important to have an alliance. The alliance situation that they've set up is actually quite robust. I'm in this alliance right now. We have 30 members. There's an alliance shop where you accrue kind of alliance uh, tokens, these blue kind of shards, and you can trade those shards in for certain items or certain fragments of characters if you need to build them up. And then that will uh, cycle every so often so you can get new deals every day. In addition to that, every single day you will have alliance missions. And this is something I think is really nice. They've gotten everyone in the alliance involved. If you you want to generate more of these rewards, more of these blue shards, you should do these personal missions and also it will tally the group's personal mission. So it creates some competition between group members because as you can see here, uh, depending on your score, you will be either at the top of the list or uh, somewhere you know, at the bottom if you've been lazy about it. But in addition to that, you also get rewards for being in the top three. And then every single day, the Alliance mission changes. So today, it's upgrade effects, upgrade events, sorry, with Cheetah, Flash, or Robin. Tomorrow, it's PvP battles with Arcus, Metaphil, or Sinestro, Yellow, La Yellow Lantern. So that additional kind of caveat that allows you to uh, succeed in different Alliance missions with different characters also encourages you to build up your roster, which is excellent. A lot of people in the game love uh, game modes that encourage a wide, expanded, well, evenly built rosters. In addition to that, the top alliances will get an additional bonus. So on top of competing with your alliance, you can compete with other alliances, and then the top 100 will get a certain um, you know, additional reward based on their performance. So I think the Alliance is a really big uh, move in the right direction for DC Legends. I've had a lot of fun with my Alliance. I'm not cheating on my Alliance in Future Fight. It's just a different group of guys. I don't know any of them. And I think it's really fun for this game. In addition, they've added this thing called the Void Scanner, which is really nothing super special, but it is just one free roll per day and it's kind of interesting you can pay for additional rolls and some people do but uh, I just take my one f uh, free daily scan per day and it gives you a random reward sometimes it lets you roll again which is what I almost got in this case I got some XP chips which is nice but I think this is a nice little added benefit that makes the free to play players feel good about you know logging in every day and you get some reward uh, for that. Speaking of logging in every day, I, I can't show it to you guys now because it's not the reset time, but they've improved quite dramatically the login events and login bonuses that you get just for logging in every day. So if you're thinking of picking up this game, now is honestly the best time because in addition to the regular login events that they're having, they're having a special June of Wonder Woman to celebrate the movie. So they're tying in this game to the movie, which is awesome, and they gave everyone 50 um, hero shards for the new uh, Wonder Woman Defender of Justice, I believe it's called, 
and it's just a great way to start the character off. You start her off at three stars and you can build her up further uh, from that. This is the character over here. Looks pretty well like Gal Gadot. The, uh, the likeness is quite strong, Defender of Justice. And so that's a really cool extra bonus that I don't think they were doing at the beginning of the game's launch, but that they are doing now. In addition, they've introduced these things called Hero Challenges. They're actually quite old now, but I'm new to them, so I'm still exploring them. And basically, they allow you to farm for specific Hero Shards every single kind of week or every few days it rotates and so this month of june because it's obviously wonder woman in the movie everything is wonder woman themed so they've got um the poison doctor i think or i can't remember her name and they've got uh, diana they've got another wonder woman that you can farm for later on and it's basically just this daily stage that you can get through and depending on your roster you can get further or not so far if you're a newbie, but it guarantees bios or guarantees uh, shards every single time that you play. And so it's a really great way to build up specific characters, especially if they're brand new to the game, the way that Defender of Justice is. Master of the Toxic Challenge, that's what it is. Anyways, guys, in addition to that, they've introduced a game mode, which I think is probably one of their best, and it's the Red Alerts. And a lot of people in the community, as far as I surveyed, were very excited for this game mode. If you look at the rewards, they're actually not fantastic. You get in total uh, 40, you get about 80 uh, crystals or 80 of those gems, which are kind of the paid currency per day, because this resets every day. You get some random bios, or I got pretty lucky today, I got the same one, but usually it's two different heroes or villains and then you get some of this green essence that's used for upgrading things and for certain missions but with what i think is really great about this uh, game mode is that it's constantly evolving on the first uh case the the teams that you'll face will actually improve in their uh, power level depending on how improved your roster is so the enemies that i'm facing are going to be totally different than the enemies you face if you have a less improved roster or a dramatically more improved complete and higher power level roster so i think that is great in addition to that if you fight in a battle and you win most of the other missions will be shuffled around with new opponents and a new team composition whether it's mostly reds mostly blues or you know i don't know a, a healthy mix of them all so i think this is a really creative kind of almost like a puzzle game mode because you're going through the gauntlet with your team of course if they die you can bring in new characters but and at least in my case i only have one a solid strong group that can compete so I'm trying to get as far as I can with just this one group um, and I'm trying to kind of find my uh, my my perfect match and, and fit my fights in where I think I have an advantage and if I don't have an advantage then I may have to take on a stronger opponent and try to beat them just to shuffle around everybody else I think the red alerts are fantastic the rewards are just a nice cherry on top but the um, the overall fun and the encouragement of building up a full roster for this mode I think is very good for the longevity of this game. In addition to these improvements, they've also improved the PvP rewards, which is something that I wasn't aware of until I went back and I looked at my old video. The League rewards now offer uh, this Champion 2 score of 70 uh, shards and 500 of these red um, essences for the top 10,000, whereas it used to be the top 1,000. So they've expanded the range. I think they expanded the range also because more people are playing this game, but it's good to see that they're paying attention to the PvP scene, at least in this aspect, and they're making it more available for more people to get a good uh, reward from their troubles. In addition, guys, I think that it's really awesome that they've been able to tie in so well with the movie, introducing new characters specifically about uh, the movie, Wonder Woman in this case. Without giving you guys too many spoilers, you can see characters here like Dr. Poison. You can see, of course, uh, Ares as a sale character, but he's also been introduced as a new character, which for now is uh, paywall, but maybe in a future event in the game. And I think it's really awesome that they've done that because it does make the game feel more topical and it makes you more excited when you go to the movies and you see these things and you can come in and play the game. And you can, in this case, play with the exact same characters from the movie. And that's something we love about things like, you know, things that Marvel does and things that other game brands do where they tie things in to real life events and it makes it so much more fun to then come into the game and play with these characters that you've seen on the big screen or in books or in other media. The final thing I do want to say, which is something that's going to be a little bit iffy for some people, uh, but I do want to mention it because it's important to mention and it's something that I did take a lot of points away from DC Legends for doing, it's the sales aspect, the pay to win, pay to play aspect. 
When I first started the game, when I first jumped into it, I was uh, quite shocked at how expensive characters were and how difficult it was to build up your roster as a free-to-play player. Now, I don't think that the cost of characters has improved dramatically. I don't think the cost has gone down by much, but I have started to see more generous sales. I have seen the community be a little bit more um, conducive to the sales that are going on. Hey, this is a better deal than we usually see. Uh, a lot of these 8,000 and 9,000 um, gem sales are really not a good deal, but these 850 gems or 950 gem sales are a much better uh, investment for your value. And these new gems of war, previously they had the same one for uh, Wonder Woman, so you could get her up to, I believe, at least five stars or legend one with that purchase. I know it's a lot of money, but you can liken it to some other big sales in other games that you play, where if you wanna get a character to the max rank, you're going to pay close to $100. So this is pretty much the same, but in addition, you also get a bunch of gems. This is not a sale that existed at all when I first started the game. So it's good to see that with more players in the game that they're starting to loosen the uh, you know position that they have on sales and that they are trying to be more generous to try and reward players for being loyal to the game and for supporting it for so long because they're you know they're coming up on a year not too many months from now so it's going to be interesting to see how much further they get between now and then and i hope to uh be able to review them again at that time if they're still doing well i still want to know what the hell this thing is because it still doesn't work but it's still here in the corner and last but not least why do we have this giant side banner with nothing here okay i want to go into the hangar bay let me go play with Martian Manhunter's forehead or something, all right? So let me know what you guys think of the video. Let me know what you think of the improvements to DC Legends. If you're still playing it, I want to hear your voice. If you're just picking it up, let me know who you're going to try and build up because I have some favorites. Reverse Flash, boys. But I want to hear what you guys uh, have to say and who you like out of this list, guys. So, of course, I hope you like this video. And, of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. He doesn't move. Take care.